Hi boardies, this is a how to set up, play and review of the game HeroQuest. So high adventure in a world of magic, it's by Moulton Bradley, that's MB Games. Nine to adults, there's some additions say ten to adults, two to five players, clear step by step rules. So I have brought, uh, got another video out already in play. This is just a little bit more detail around say how you set up the game. So quest book, this is going to decide which one you're going to be doing. You're going to have the rules of play, which is here, that's what I'm here for. Uh, if you're watching on Instagram or, say, uh, Facebook, head over to YouTube. It's just the first minute. Uh, you're going to have this for the baddie. And uh, the other video I did was more around um, the history of um, the game Hero Quest and about the baddie and why we're trying to smite him. Let's set it up. Well, I will set it up this way. This is basically the side where the baddie will be, the dungeon master. So that should just about be in shot. And it's a similar layout to some more newer games such as um, Zombie Side. The difference being this has got a single board, not multiple boards, so it's quicker to set up and quicker to start, and generally quicker to play. So you're going to have uh, the opportunity to choose a mission. I'm going to talk you through the tutorial, just talk you through how you start. So you have what's called the arena, and you're going to pick, say, let's use all the heroes. It's marginally easier using all the heroes. Because like in other games, the more abilities, the more sort of special abilities heroes have, the more likely it is that you have an additional thing to beat a baddie. So you can place them wherever you like. And just in terms of what these abilities are, you have these things here telling you how strong they are. You need a pencil and paper, or you're going to have what I'm going to show you in a second, something that indicates who you are. So you're going to take something from a score pad, so pencil or whatever, using the game on pencil here. So then write down whoever you want to call yourself, uh, write down their mind and body, and they're going to be changing this as it goes, and tasks completed, such as uh, whichever task we're going to do. And then what you're going to need is, uh, for the first of this tutorial mission, we're going to need some, uh, some goblins or something like that. So what we do need to be aware of is uh, probably the baddie, they're going to have this quest book and say exactly what you need to do. But for the beginning one, we're playing Way of the Warrior, so you're going to place out these five uh, four things. You're then going to be placing out uh, four goblins or five goblins. So you're going to chuck these guys out and the baddie can pick where they go. Now you can see how many hit points they have. What we have is equal to ours. These guys, the baddies, you can look in these cards here. And I'll tell you what they're going to be. So for example, an orc will be attack dice three. They'll defend with two dice. They can move up to eight spaces. Mind um, is two. Body one. Mind is never used in, in Hero Quest. It's an additional thing to additional games. But it's very strange to have such a thing when it came out uh, when it did, considering you then need to get an expansion. The only thing like that is a game called The Palaces of Carrera. Okay, so this is all about teaching about movement. So the person to the left of the baddie is going to roll two dice for movement. And you can move up to nine spaces. So I might want to come in two to attack. And then let's say I'm playing as the Barbarian, I can throw three attack dice. And what this means is a shield, so I did no damage, and then somebody else can come along. Uh, so this guy, well we know it's a minimum of two you can roll, so I'm just going to move him two. And then it's going to be the Dwarf, and you're rolling two, you get two hits. Now, the Orcs, they can defend with two. So now they're going to take two, and they defend one. So I've only hit it for one, but it only has a health of one. So he'll come off the map and go back in the box. And then we do again, 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 till eventually either they win or we win. Once we've all moved, they then attack. And again, we could start having to reduce our, our character sheets equal to the amount of damage we've done. And then you go again. So damage is only going to be one with these orc guys. And that is way of the warrior. So it just gets used to that. So let's move on to the next one, which is you can restart. And then suddenly you've got these kind of guys out again. And then what happens is we're doing the way of the sorcerer, or way of the wizard. Now in this instance, what we have is a number of spell cards. So the spell cards I leave off to one side, and what you're doing is you're assigning these spell cards to the people who basically can use magic, which is the elf and the wizard. So you're going to have those cards, and at that point, it's the first pick goes to the wizard. So the wizard might pick, uh, let's say, earth spells. Then you've got the elf gets the water, and the wizard gets... Uh, the fire, and uh, there's one other which I can't see for some reason. Oh, uh, earth, so we have air, water and fire. Yeah, so they can have the water, they have air and fire, something like that. 
And when it's their turn, instead of attacking, they can use something on the card. So in this case, you could use it so you can move through walls. You could use it to heal somebody, or you can use it to throw two extra combat dice. So different things that you can choose to use. You don't have to use them. Sometimes they're not worth using, but it's just something else that you can use instead of attacking. The whole point being is you don't have to use attack purely for what it is. There's a game called Gloomhaven, which is almost similar. You don't have to be really aggressive. Uh, the same in other games such as Jaws the Lion, which has just come out. You don't have to tank yourself and get really strong to beat these guys. So that is the Way of the Wizard. The last one is called Way of the Scout, and it's called the Arena. It's called the Maze. And now you're going to be using this little booklet here. Now these characters can be quite difficult to see, in particular even your own characters, like the Wizard and like the Elf. It's not really apparent until you paint these things up. So you go and pick a mission, and so for example, the maze, you're then going to have the baddie, so we don't need to worry about these anymore, put them away. You're going to have the baddie having their shield up, and they're going to have certain things, so you're going to have things here telling about traps and things like that for iconography. And then you're going to go into something like one of these things like this, and as you can see, you only ever use a fraction of the entire board. But what you're going to be doing is these warriors can move along these outer edges. They can't cross through these white lines. And what they can do is either move or they could uh, attack. Or what they can do is say, I want to search. So you can say, I want to search. And you're either saying for a, a trap um, or like a hidden entrance. Or you can say, I want to search for treasure. So you might belong this line and say, is there treasure? And they might say, no. Then it's kind of your turn unless you want to then move. Because so you can move uh, and attack, but you can, or you can attack, then you can move, but you can't move, attack, move, like in other games. You could uh, find an open door and move right through that door. But what's going to happen is the baddie's going to see that map layout and decide, okay, so from this map layout, there's some hidden entrances. And it might be the mission B that you need to get through these things to get to a certain location. So if I just move some of these things out of the way, you're going to have these things. These are hidden doors. So it might be the case that I might say, is anything like a hidden door? And they say, yes. So they can go in here. And it might be the case that there are some doors as well. You don't see doors until you can see them. So you wouldn't put a door there until someone's walked past it. And once they've seen it, they can come through. So that's an open door. Now you can come in and now maybe the case that they say, oh, there's an empty room, there's nothing in here. But you come in here and then you say, oh, I want to search for a hidden room, a hidden trap, a hidden door. And you go, aha, well, there is one. So now you can come through and you're suddenly in this room. And there might be, there may be a monster in here. So you might have to deal with that. You might want to escape. Such like, there might be treasure, which of course you could have. And per mission, it might say something like the first person to reach the center, basically the way out, which could look like this to show you're trying to escape up the, up the stairs. What's there means you get 100 gold. And you start using gold and, and such like jewels and coins to upgrade yourself. So you can make a note on your character sheet and like, for example, you can get the shield for 100 gold. The wizard doesn't use it. You can gain armor. This shield gives you one extra combat dice in defense, combat die. The grammar is really good in this. Even in the 80s, it's even now you see so many booklets or cards incorrect. So that's how the game progresses. Uh, you're going to go through various missions. There are 14 in the book and numerous others you can have too. And what you're looking to decide upon is uh, you know, where do you want to be going? So in this instance, the stone hunter, you're going to have certain things coming into these adventures and, you know, they roll an extra defense die or they do something. And it's something to be aware of. You've got, um, you know, furniture and things like that, which looks fantastic. All the stuff in the box is, is really, really high quality for something, again, which is so old in comparison. So that is in a nutshell um, how Hero Quest is. In terms of the components, so this is really good. The cards are really good. I mean, very, very thick. I'm really impressed how thick those cards are. Proper old school thickness, nice. It might be because they're not too big, they're not too small, it fits very well. It's nice to have a little reference sheet as to who it is that you're fighting, and you can have that permission. Um, I don't like dungeon crawls too much. I mean, I have played Descent, Shadows of Brimstone, I've played uh, Gloomhaven and others, um, and Imperial Assaults, but I know those are the highest rated ones there are anyway, um, and Tainted Grail, which is a little bit like it too. But I don't like the claustrophobia too much, and in games such as Zombicide, it's more strategic. You know where all the rooms are, and you know, right, okay, so there could be some monsters coming towards me, 
and I prefer thinking about it in that way. This time it's dice rolling for a start, um, which is one thing to consider. But also what you're dealing with is the fact you don't know what's in these rooms. And it is quite thrilling. It's a good thing. But I still find it's not something that I'm, it's not my uh, favourite uh, style. And um, as for the missions, yeah, you've got to make sure that the baddie, you know, whoever is the dungeon master, keeps an eye on this stuff and making sure this is all correct and looking around. I don't think it's too thrilling, but it depends on the person if they enjoy, you know, keeping an eye out on, on certain people. And lastly, uh, if you want to get a game like this, it's quite a short game. Um, it's relatively short because compared to those other games I mentioned, 14 you know, games to play is decent. But once you've played as the good guys, you now have some inkling, you probably will forget it to be honest, of what it was the baddies had seen. And you might may recall that now you want to do a certain thing if you're now playing as the baddie or it's not going to be as hard as you play the second time knowing you can just whiz right through a certain location. So there's something like that to be aware of, and I guess it's down to the you know the baddie to place out things as they wish. So this has been um refunded uh, by um, Hasbro, and these game these games copies go for you know hundreds of pounds, and these are more valuable than the the reprints. And it's because yeah, supply and demand, and you know that kind of vintage classic you get with an older game. This is good, but it does flop, so you do need to bend that quite hard to get it to not fall over. It's a big board, but not huge. Um, it's just, as I've mentioned in the other video, these are all over the place, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's inspired a lots of other games. Um, but my rating, I was going to give it a 6.5. Uh, it just has a feeling like it's got lots of great things going for it. And um, having said that based on willing to play it's actually more like a five and that's because of so many other games that are um achieve a similar thing and of course this is the beginning of it fantastic artwork by les um who did the front art work and it's even like the hair is fantastic they've done this this is really good but for me um i just find that all you're doing is you're looking into a room and then deciding it's a shark are you then going into a room and then are you deciding well am i choosing to search for a trap am i searching for for treasure or neither and it just finds feel, feels quite laborious knowing have i even been in this room before now it's quite competitive because you can play as a team and win together but also you can like chuck down some schmite on one of your fellow characters such as the dwarf and the reason you might want to do it is to get some treasure first so it can be a bit of an in fight as well which can be good for you if you want that um, it's a long box as well, so it's a bit harder to keep a, keep an eye on. And I said some of the characters do look quite similar, unless you consider painting them. Great information on the backs of these um, quest books about how to paint them, which is really good to see. And um, yeah, I mean, in terms of the entry points, nine is fantastic. Um, there's nothing really, you know, horrific. And that's where some games, maybe even Zombie Side, is a little um, touch on the adults. And thus, uh, I mean, in terms of the name again, Zombicide's fantastic. Hero Crest is great too. So hopefully that was of interest. And yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. Please hit the thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. I've been doing videos daily for the past five months. And also comment and check out the description. Look forward to seeing another videos. Thanks very much. Bye for now.